So let's talk about, we're going to talk about religion uh, today, and uh, they had a big religion segment, Meeting the, Meet the Press with uh, David Gregory. He, uh, he brought on Billy Graham's daughter, right? Oh, good. Right, because I, uh, I was trying to think of, uh, well, I, I guess they couldn't get Pat Robertson's maid, so they got uh, Billy Graham's daughter. And um, she had this to say about what she looks for in a presidential candidate. The thing that I think is so important, the Bible says that the beginning of wisdom is fear of God. And I believe one of the greatest um, lacks in our nation today is that genuine fear, reverence for an almighty God. And that's where wisdom begins. So we have a lot of knowledge and you can go on Google and you can pull up all sorts of stuff, but to know how to use the knowledge in a way that benefits the majority of people in this country, that's what I... Yeah, first you have to get really scared before you... (laughs) Fear-based decisions are always the most rational, Jimmy. That's how we go to war. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if there's one thing I've learned in the last 10 years is that some of the best thinking occurs when you approach problems from a position of fear, <laughs> right? It, uh, it's that they've elevated fear to, a, to be a virtue mm-hmm. now. They, they, they now attribute it to great leader. Hey, look at that guy over there. What a good leader he is. Which guy? The guy shitting his pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, he's got what God likes in a leader, <laughs> that guy. Oh. Does, this, uh, does she have any other qualifications besides that she's Billy Graham's daughter? No, she has zero qualifications. Wow. Uh, oh, yes, she does. Uh, she uh, just won a trophy for sounding like a man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> By the way, if you see her, she looks like an elven queen. She's like extraordinarily pale and white haired and oh. thin and angular and it's really you you expect her to do magic at any moment. Oh yeah, if you could see the video of this, she's uh she is generic southern lady though. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well what? I don't mind that she's you know I mean she has a freedom of speech, so she has the right to be on TV, but I just think it would be appropriate to say afterwards, okay, now we've heard from the crazy lady. <laughs> what do you have to say? Yeah. Oh, let's, she just Why keep... can't she say reverence for, for God? Why no, does it have to fe- be fear of God? Fear of God. In fact, she... that's like, isn't that basic tenet of Christianity that you're supposed to have a fear of God, aren't no, but you? That's yes. the, it, that's I think a, that's it, very it, Old uh, Testament kind it's of... It's Old God. Testament yeah. rhetoric. It's uh, like yeah. real like preacher rhetoric. It's not... It's just gross. Yeah, it is pretty gross. Uh, I, but yes, yeah, she has fear is the base. She even has a little bit more to say. Hang on. This country, that's what I look for in a president. I want my leader to have a, a fear and a respect and a reverence. She for can't God. stop saying it. She says fear like four times in 15 seconds. Fear for, yeah, my father, Billy Graham, he was good friends with Richard Nixon, who feared both God and the satanic Jews who run the media. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, because when you start talking religious zealots in the Bible Belt, I'm always thinking, raise your sharp intellect. That's, <laughs> that's where it all comes from. Yeah, you know, knowledge is all fine and good, but when mankind stopped slaughtering non-believers and started reading books, we really lost something special. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that. Yeah, so that's what she looks for in a president, somebody who's just afraid of God. You and know, uh, and if he's a right-wing, pro-life, pro-gun, tax-cutting Republican who hates unions, that would be perfect, too. <laughs> I happened to, to watch Rick Santorum's uh, speech uh, the other day when he said he was dropping out of the race. And immediately, I was watching MSNBC, and immediately afterwards, uh, Tamron Hall had David Gregory on to give instant analysis. Uh-huh. And and he you know and he was praising Rick Santorum and saying you know he was a strong he was a very strong pro family candidate and as long as it's not a gay family right it's like it's you know the way someone in the media like David Gregory frames things so he was pro family you could also say he was pro bigotry yes you know and that would be in my opinion a more accurate thing to say about uh, Rick Santorum but and. You know, he they just let these these crazy people get away with. You know, so it's much. that it's that old thing about. Um, you know, I have uh, some relatives, nieces and nephews. I have a huge family, like sixty nieces and mm-hmm. nephews, and a um, bunch of them are religious. And so, um, two of the more religious ones were coming around, and my we were at a barbecue, and my dad's. We, you know, I was making some jokes about Catholics or whatever. And a uh, good place for you to do that, Jim. <laughs> well, I, it's my family. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so, so they're they're coming around the corner, and my dad goes, "Oh, here comes." Here comes, you know, Karen and and Bob, and uh, hey, be, be, uh, cool it with the religion joke. They're really religious. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, well, why don't they cool it with their religious stuff around me? Because I'm really atheist. So <laughs> how come right. I have to? Uh, why, why do they get to be more vulnerable, sensitive than me? Just because they're religious? I don't understand. But that's what this is about Rick Santorum. When he professes to be religious, then you have to, you just have to, like, yeah. he's a, somehow a better person. Well, he's, he's pro family. Who isn't pro family? 
Who isn't pro family? Well, Newt Gingrich is considered pro family because yeah, no, uh, he's had many of them. <laughs> you know, and o- Obama, who has this great, you know, marriage and these and two kids, and and nobody, they don't talk about him being pro family. No, he's but, how could he possibly be pro family? He only has one of them. He yeah. only has one family. He's not a professional family starter like Newt Gingrich. <laughs> pro family is you're trying to restrict people from actually having. Well, no, okay. <laughs> Pro family, yeah, it doesn't make any sense because it's like like Obama has a family, but nobody gives him any credit for it. He didn't, you know, he didn't screw up his life or anything. He didn't have twelve marriages. It doesn't make any sense why you're you're more for the family because you won't let people have the freedom to right. do what they want. Like, why why is that more pro family if you're if you're against their their arrangement? It's, it's really pro pro limited version of what family means right, to you. Right. I well, think you guys are missing because what he what. What he means when he says pro family is professional family. Ooh. Guys who've made a profession <laughs> out of yes. being family men. Right. He's not talking about people who are for families. He's just talking and about. And you know, people. the ultimate. Uh, They've gone pro. You know, the Clintons were reviled by everybody. Uh, and, and in a way, they're like kind of the ultimate pro family because their, their marriage survived all of their, which is what it's supposed to be. You know, when Newt Gingrich uh, cheated on his, you know, he left his wife, you know, Split a up couple of times. Yeah. You know, Bill Clinton certainly had his, uh, his, uh, you know, dalliances. In, in, dalliances and infidelities, but their marriage, but they stayed married and they survived it. So, and that's, that's more of a, um, of an example of what you're supposed to do, but they never give them credit for no, that. No, Bill Clinton will never be seen as the family man, even though right. he's, he's, he stayed married longer than Al Gore. Yeah, exactly. Longer than Al and Tipper Gore. Tipper mm. Gore, who said it was rock and roll that's going to ruin our family. Uh, Remember, she was rock and roll's going to ruin our family. It turns out it wasn't. Right. turns out uh, just you. Just no, you guys it, it ruined your family. It was actually a jazz fusion that ruined our family. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here's Mitt Romney talking about the president now, because he's got a big religion problem, right? You know, the president has a religious problem. Uh, uh, not the president. I'm talking uh, Mitt Romney does. Um, which he's failed to address. Has he thought of updating his religion chip? <laughs> <laughs> so Mitt Romney, has, he has a religion problem. And here's Rick Warren. You know Rick Warren from the oh. out... He's the... Uh, He's the guy who wants everybody to uh, he, to not live off the government, and he always brags about how much charity work the church does, and you don't need the government mm-hmm. to do it for you. And I'm like, sure, well, then why don't you start paying taxes like the rest of everybody if he, you don't need a special handout from the government? He wrote that book, The, the Douchebag Driven Life? Yes. <laughs> Outselled the Bible, that oh, book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It really did. Okay, here Mitt we- has a religion problem. Has he tried updating the, his, uh, uh, the firmware on his religion chip? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here, here, so here is uh, here's his problem with the Mitt Romney. Are Mormons Christians? Well, the, the the key sticking point for evangelicals and actually for many is the issue of the Trinity. That's the historic doctrine of the Church that God is three in one, not three gods, one God in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mormonism denies that. That's a sticking point for a lot of. Catholic Christians, Evangelical Christians, Pentecostal Christians, because they don't, they don't believe that. Now, they'll use the same terminology, but they don't believe in the historic doctrine of the Trinity. And people have tried to make it other issues, but that's really one of the fundamental differences. Yeah, so the problem wouldn't be that it was started by a crazy guy 150 years ago because he got caught cheating on his wife, or the fact that they, were, they wouldn't let blacks become members until 1978. It wasn't any of those problems, or the fact that they could have multiple wives. None of that stuff is a problem. It's this, this, this hocus-pocus mm. voodoo right. that he doesn't believe in. That's the three-in-one, mm. and you don't get it, and blah, blah, blah. And that, yeah, that's the point. It, most Christians have that subtle an understanding <laughs> yes. of the differences between Christianity. Yes, they're all scholars, and that's their problem with Mormonism. That guy is giving more credit to yes. the stupidest people on the planet than is possible. So he's, he thinks that Mormons don't believe in the solid foundation of the ghost that real Christians believe in. <laughs> 